I guess I, I have to give you a little bit of background. In, in uh, 2007, uh, an organization called the Indian Head Agriculture Research Foundation, IHARF, came up with a farmer-driven project in which they were asking the question, is there some sort of strategy or is there a better way to control aeration fans such that they would be more effective or more efficient? In other words, uh, the, the common knowledge even today is to leave, put your grain in the bin and just turn on the fan on and leave it on continuously until your grain is dry. The question is, is that the best way? Or are there times when we should be turning the fan on and off? So what they did is they actually took uh, two, two bins with the intention that one would be a control, okay? One would be a control and the other one would be uh, 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 the one that you experiment with. But they started off by just running the fan continuously on both of them and collecting the data. Now the two pieces of data that were the, of the most importance was the temperature, the outside air temperature and the relative humidity of the air going into the fan or the ambient air temperature and the relative humidity and the air temperature of the air being exhausted at the top. And now what you can do is you can actually calculate the, the uh, amount of water going into the bin with the air temperature and relative humidity you can calculate how much water there is in a certain volume on the input and on the output and then, so the difference is going to tell us whether we're drying and how much we're drying or we're wetting the grain or how much we're wetting the grain. So okay? it's important to know both those parameters. You have to know them both and it's really the difference so if we're putting 80 pounds of water in and we're taking 90 pounds of water out we're actually removing a net 10 pounds of water it has to be coming from the grain. That's, there's no other place it could be coming from. So if you treat the bin as a kind of a black box approach and look at what's going in and what's coming out, what's being lost or gained along the way or through the black box must be due to the black box, which in this case would be the grain. What have you found through these studies? Well, we, we weren't particularly looking for a control strategy other than let's first of all find out what's happening on a, on a daily basis. The, these parameters were measured on an hourly basis and then we calculated the actual amount of water that was going in and out and we found out clearly without really doing any other manipulation or analysis the data showed clearly that the water was coming out at night and going in during the daytime. Wait, so water was going in in hot temperatures? Yes. Why okay. is that? That was a good question and we didn't know that actually at first and we went through more and more data and more and more runs and it was all still saying the same thing. The hotter the day, the more water was actually going into the bin and the colder the night, the more water was coming out and this is absolutely counterintuitive to what people think and what, is being, what they're being told to do. They're being told to turn their fan on during the daytime or leave it on continuously and off at night and off for sure if it's cold. So what's going on here? That was the question. But in looking at this and analyzing it, it actually became fairly clear what was going on. That hot air outside during the daytime, like a day like today, even though the relative humidity can be fairly low, the air is still holding a lot of water, a lot of water. And when it hits that cold grain, the temperature goes down and it can't hold that water now. The air temperature around the grain instantly goes down as soon as it hits that grain and it has to drop the water. So the it's, water it drops, ends up in the grain. The water drops off probably on the outside of the grain. I don't think if it really gets to the inside, but it does drop the water off into the grain. At night we have just the opposite. We have warm grain, relatively speaking, to the cold night air that's coming in and that cold night air is dry. It hits that warm air of the grain, or the warm grain, warms up and it now it says, holy smoke, look, I, I'm warm and I don't have any water. I, I have great water holding capacity and therefore it gobbles the water up from the grain and dries the grain out. 
So at night we find out that the water is being taken out of the grain because of that temperature difference of the grain and the air. The air gets warmed up, lots of holding capacity, takes the grain out of, or takes water out of the grain. Okay, so say that it's um, 30 degrees out and we're harvesting our grains. How, what do we do with it? We don't just turn the fan on and leave it on? No. Probably the best thing to do is to follow that simple rule. If the grain temperature is greater than the outside air temperature, turn the fan on. So if you 30 degrees, grain's coming in at 30 degrees Celsius, put it in the bin and follow that algorithm. If it's colder than 30 degrees, probably is, turn your fan on. And as you turn your fan on throughout the day, the grain temperature is going to start to come down and follow that air temperature, go down, 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 probably all to the night. The next morning you're going to get a flip. It's going to, it's going to start to try to wet the grain. Typically we find that flip at 9 o'clock in the morning. So turn it back off at 9? Turn it off at 9 o'clock. If you don't know anything else, turn your fan off at 9 o'clock. Turn it on at night, turn it off at 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's a pretty sure bet that you're going to be doing a good job of, of not only drying your grain, you're going to be keeping it cold, you're going to be keeping it safe.